Comprising more than 7,000 islands, the Philippine archipelago enjoys generous endowment of Mother Nature's beauty and bounty. The country nestles in Southeast Asia, an incident in geography which placed the country adjacent to the world's major bodies of water like the Pacific Ocean, making its own waters teem with rich marine life. Its blue and idyllic seas offer bountiful catch. It is not surprising why the fisheries industry is one of the primary components of its economy. In the third quarter of 2017, the fisheries subsector shared 17.40% of the total agriculture production. It grossed 56.7 billion pesos at current prices. With its vast fisheries and aquatic resources, local populace in the coastal areas is highly dependent on the fisheries industry. The increasing economic demand, however, for fish and fishery products brought about by the growing population bred serious threats of illegal, unreported, and unregulated or IUU fishing. Thus, the whole fisheries resources have become vulnerable to misuse and abuse. Too much fishing pressure left some of the country's fishing grounds in ailing state. To address this pressing issue, the Philippine government through the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources under the Duterte administration has created innovative platforms for conservation of marine resources and freshwater fish habitats like lakes and rivers. Well, uh, basically we are, we are following the uh, instructions of the President, President Duterte who said that uh, it is his moral obligation to provide uh, available and affordable food for the Filipinos. It's quite a complicated mission simply because uh, for food to be available, you have to produce a lot of it. For food to be affordable, it must be priced uh, low or you have to empower your people financially so that they can buy. So we're looking at agriculture now, not only in the context of producing food, but also uh, in the context of uh, addressing poverty in the countryside. So we talk about rice productivity instead of rice sufficiency. We talk about sustainability uh, instead of subsidy. You have to understand that uh, for so many years, uh, our fishing grounds uh, have been uh, overfished, abused, and uh, neglected. So right now, uh, what we are trying to do is first uh, conservation, and then protection, and then repopulation. Uh, these are the things that we're doing right now. Uh, and we do this by uh, ensuring that uh, there will be uh, enforcement, strict enforcement of fisheries laws, especially against destructive fishing and illegal fishing. And also, uh, we are implementing uh, a program where we are helping uh, our uh, uh, fish farmers develop uh, aquaculture. And also, uh, we are uh, repopulating our lakes, rivers, and uh, creeks with uh, fingerlings so that uh, we'll be able to bring back uh, the supply of fish in the uh, freshwater areas of the country. A brainchild of Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinyon, the Malinis at Masaganang Karagatan, or Clean and Abundant Seas, for example, is now on its second year of implementation as the national search for the country's most outstanding coastal community. The Malinis at Masaganang Karagatan, or MMK, is a positive approach of motivating the local government units and the coastal communities to be directly involved in the sustainable management and development of their natural resources. Well, MMK basically, or Malinis Masaganang Karagatan, 
basically is a um, an awareness program. Uh, it makes uh, people aware of uh, the fact that if they do not protect uh, their fishing grounds, they would lose a lot. So we encourage uh, communities, coastal communities, to first make sure that their, their uh, fishing grounds are clean, uh, there are no floating garbage, number two, that there is no illegal fishing in the area, number three, that they have a closed uh, fishing season of three months, number four, that they have a uh, mangrove uh, protected area, and number five, that they have a marine sanctuary. So any community that excels uh, in this uh, five, five criteria uh, will be chosen in its region as winners, regional winners. Then they go to the national competition. Winning communities receive multi-million pesos worth of livelihood projects for their fisher folk. Another notable initiative of the government on resource conservation is the project called BASIL, or short for Baliksigla sa Ilog at Lawa. Essentially, the project is a national inland fisheries enhancement program which aims to bring back native, non-invasive, and commercially viable fishes to lakes, rivers, and other inland waters. The goal is to rehabilitate these bodies of water and help alleviate poverty in fishing communities by providing them with clean, abundant, and sustainable sources of food and livelihood within their reach. The President, President Duterte, is fully committed to uh, change things in this country, for the better, of course. And I, as his Agriculture Secretary, is fully, uh, fully committed to support him in this endeavor. As I've said, uh, I have dedicated myself uh, to the uh, uh, realization of his vision of available and affordable food for the Philippines. Because by doing such, I pay tribute to the farmers and fisher folks of this country. We are really in full support of the program of the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries under the leadership of the Ex Secretary Manny Pino. And of course, it reflects to the program really wanted by the President. That is, uh, it, it is his moral obligation to feed the Filipino people through the agriculture, affordable and uh, available food for everybody. MMK and Basil are just part of the overall efforts of the Philippine government through the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources of the Department of Agriculture to rehabilitate, if not totally bring back, the country's fisheries and aquatic environments to their original state. These programs also aim to communicate the message that if we put our acts together, the rich fisheries resources that nature gifted the Philippines and other parts of the world can flourish and feed generations of the present and beyond.